Hello, Wolfpack. I wanted to make a video um, regarding what altcoins I'm holding uh, in the upcoming bull market, uh, what altcoins I'm going to be holding, what altcoins uh, potentially I have my eyes on for it. Um, I'm not going to tell you exactly, obviously, you know, how much of those coins I'm going to be holding, but I'm just, you know, as an expression of interest into these altcoins and as kind of an example to you guys of some of the reasoning behind uh, what I hold and the structure of my portfolio, um, this video doesn't have all of the coins I'm holding, just a few. Um, and essentially, we're going to be breaking them down and, you know, the reasoning behind me holding them. Uh, so we'll start off. <coughs> Here we got WanChain, right? I've spoken about WanChain a lot. Um, and essentially, the reason why I'm holding WanChain and one of the reasons why I think WanChain is going to perform well in this bull market, obviously because of the tech, right? And I don't want to get too much into the fundamentals in this video, but the technology on WanChain uh, is something that I think is unmatched in the market, right? In the current state of the market, um, specifically uh, for its market cap ranking, right? WanChain is currently at 291 on the market cap ranking. Um, there's not many projects out there uh, below the top 200 which have, uh, you know, better fundamentals than WanChain, in my opinion. Uh, they got a partnership with Stakery Corporation in China. Anyway, I just did a video on WanChain a couple of days ago. I'm not going to go too deep in the fundamentals, but essentially, I believe in the project. I believe in interoperability, which is essentially the kind of the mindset that, um, you know, there's not going to be one cryptocurrency or one blockchain that rules them all, right? Uh, in order for cryptocurrency to work out, you know, quote unquote, work out, there has to be many different blockchains, you know, connecting with each other, each doing different roles, each serving a different purpose. There's not like one rules all of them, right? And that's kind of what interoperability, um, you know, goes for. Uh, it's the same, you know, it's the same with countries, right? There's the central, there's the, um, you know, global reserve currency, which is, which is the USD, but there's also many, many different currencies serving many different purposes in many different cu countries, right? And that's going to be similar to cryptocurrency, right? Bitcoin, for example, Bitcoin might be the global reserve currency. Um, but there, there also are going to be many other coins serving different purposes, right? Just because Bitcoin gets adopted as the global currency doesn't mean that these coins are going to die out, right? In fact, it probably means there's going to be more of them serving different purposes. And that's what interoperability is all about. And that's why I like WanChain. Um, you know, also in terms of price, uh, in terms of market cap, it's relatively low on the market cap ranking. I'd say this is a, a low to mid cap coin. It's good to have a low to mid cap exposure um, because something that's very important in, you know, the altcoin season is having a variety of different types of coins, right? You don't want all your coins to be in the top 25, right? Because uh, that you're not diversifying, right? If you want, you know, some coins with top 25 to lock in some guaranteed profits with those coins, some coins much lower cap, which is naturally the lower mark capitalization you go, the higher risk you go, uh, but also for the higher reward. Uh, so WanChain obviously has, you know, a bit of a long way to go until it's all-time high, and then from that point, it will go even higher. Uh, and then you take it to a coin like Litecoin, right? Which I'm holding as well, and I speak about that in a second, uh, which should, you know, relatively a uh, low reward but definitely lower risk as it's way more well known it's way more adopted um but essentially wan chain is my first coin for that and stemming off of wan chain i'm talking about icx right um icx icon um is basically the south korean counterpart to wan chain basically the, the main competitor to wan chain the price action is very very similar right you can see these charts look very similar um and i've done a video on this yes or oh, the day before yesterday or, the, or yesterday one of those two um you're explaining this as well but the reason why i'm holding icon um, is because uh, I'm hedging my bets, right? I'm hedging my bets in this market. And when it comes to portfolio structure, you want to always be hedging your bets, right? If you own Ethereum, you should own Bitcoin, right? If you own Nano, you should own Digibyte, right? You should be hedging your bets, um, you know, and seeing as these coins are competitors, I think WanChain is going to quote unquote win, you know, and outperform Icon in the long run. But, you know, if something happens that is against my expectation, I've still got Icon. I'm still not going to be missing out on the gains because at the end of the day, I believe in, you know, the general, uh, you know, surrounding ideas around WanChain and Icon, right? Interoperability. They both focus on interoperability, right? Um, so realistically, I should be diversifying within that space if I actually believe in it, not just putting all my eggs in one basket in one singular coin in that space. Because what happens if there's a hack, you know, what happens if there's a attack, a phishing scam, something like that, you know, there's always unexpected things in the market and you want to be hedging your bets in every way possible. Um, so those are my, you know, two... Uh, first coins I wanted to talk about. Uh, this is in no particular order, of course. Then next of all, I want to talk about um, my large cap exposures, right? My large cap exposures are Bitcoin Cash, uh, Litecoin, and EOS, right? These are large cap coins, both all of which are in the top 50. Uh, I want to speak a little bit about each of them, right? Bitcoin Cash. First of all, Bitcoin Cash. All right, Bitcoin Cash, the reason I'm holding Bitcoin Cash is because it has the name Bitcoin, right? Not necessarily for the use case, 
I do think it has a use case. Bitcoin Cash is always going to have a niche, even if the Lightning Network comes out. It's always going to have a niche because uh, the Lightning Network requires you to set up a node, right? And that's that's kind of unsustainable or you know inefficient for uh, individuals. It's good for companies, but on an ind individual level, I believe that Bitcoin Cash is the superior uh, method for daily transactions on an individual level. Um, and I think that it will always have that niche, right? It's always going to be cheaper. It's always going to be a little bit faster um, than Bitcoin. You know, as for whether I think it's actually going to be, you know, the world reserve currency uh, in the long run, uh, no, I don't think so. I think Bitcoin will take that role 100%. It's also a bit of a store of value. Um, but, you know, the point is it's always going to have some sort of traction, some sort of community. And also you have to keep in mind with Bitcoin Cash is it's always going to pump simply because it has the name Bitcoin, right? When people, when the mania stage comes in the bull market, when people are going crazy about cryptocurrency, all of these new investors who know absolutely nothing about the market are getting into cryptocurrency, uh, they're going to be hunting for coins that are familiar. Um, and usually all the coins they know are, you know, Bitcoin and potentially Ethereum, right? And from that point, they're just kind of guessing. So what they'll do is they'll go through the top 100 market cap ranking on coin market cap, and they'll see Bitcoin Cash. It has the name Bitcoin. They won't look any further, and they'll buy Bitcoin Cash. And that's what we saw in the last bull market. And that's why we went parabolic uh, from around 300 USD to around 4K in just a matter of a couple of weeks. And I'm expecting something very similar towards the end of the bull market for Bitcoin Cash. Um, as for Litecoin, um, and as for Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin as well, both of these coins are heavily adopted, right? Whenever when whenever a company uh, takes Bitcoin payments, takes crypto payments, they always take the four, right? The four leading coins, which is Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Bitcoin, right? Every single time. Uh, that's, you know, PayPal, Tesla, all of those companies, every single company, you know, 90% of them always take Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Bitcoin, right? So these coins have use cases, right? They're, they're, they're adopted on a large scale. That's not for no reason, right? People don't adopt things for no reason. Companies don't, you know, these institutions with teams of analysts working around the clock, they don't, you know, they don't take payments in these coins for no reason, right? If they didn't think they had utility, if they didn't think they had a future, they wouldn't take payments in them. Um, so they definitely have future. And, and I want to say about Litecoin as well, you know, very reliable, right? Been, been around since 2013, it's got a strong community, very similar to Bitcoin Cash in terms of fundamentals. Um, you know, the silver to Bitcoin's gold. It's got all the slogans, all the names. Um, you know, it's got massive amounts of volume. It's not dead by any means, as you can see. Um, you know, and this is another coin that I'm expecting to do well. It's already done well. It's already reached past its all-time high. It got rejected in the May capitulation. But um, I don't see why Litecoin can't go to at least 1,000 USD, right? Um, but essentially, Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin, very similar coins. And again, this is a recurring theme here. Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin are rivals, they're competitors, right? They're constantly competing. The communities are constantly at each other's throats. So I've invested in both of them, right? I've hedged my bets, uh, holding both of these coins. So if one of them quote unquote wins or outperforms the other, I've got that, you know, um, I've got the profits that I'm making regardless. W whether I think one of them is better than the other, doesn't matter, right? I've got the profits that I'm making regardless. I've hedged the bets. Um, so both very good coins, both large cap, uh, which means that they'll probably be pumping first when the old coin season comes, right? <clears throat> So I'm expecting that to come in December, January, possibly early February before the crash. Um, these coins will be going first. The high caps always go first. And then the money twinkles down into uh, the low caps. And so we've got EOS to add to this list. Uh, EOS is a bit of an interesting coin. Um, I'm a, bit, a little bit disappointed in EOS, I will say. But I think fundamentally, uh, it's definitely interesting, right? EOS has kind of fallen off a little bit. It was, you know, in top 10 for most of its lifespan in this bull market, you know, in 2020 and 2021, it's kind of sunk down here to 40th on the market cap ranking. But there's been constant bullish news coming out. Uh, it's had an exchange, its own exchange for bullish exchange, uh, focusing on institutions. It's had, you know, Peter Thiel from Wall Street, uh, massive amount of institutional investment in EOS. And I think, you know, I think something's coming for EOS and it's definitely got um, a bit of a community as well. I think there's a little bit of hate uh, surrounding EOS uh, regarding block one. Um, and, you know, I think stuff like that, you know, generally is a good buying signal. When there's a little bit of hate, or I guess you could say a lot of hate uh, surrounding a coin like EOS, a lot of people are very salty about EOS. Uh, they're a little bit mad, but it hasn't performed too well in the bull market. I think it has, right? I think it has. It went from around $2 to around $14. I don't know why you can be mad at that. You know, that's a 7X. It's nothing special, obviously. Um, it's pretty much performed with the market. But I think people are just genuinely upset about this coin because the, the reason is it's flatlined for so long and there's been constant promises by the team. But um, at the end of the day, you know, generally... 
when a coin is hated on, when a coin is kept down below a certain price point for an extended period of time, and the tech is constantly improving, right? There's constant updates, there's constant new releases, it's probably a buying signal, right? And that's why I'm holding EOS. And I think it's still in that large cap region, right? It's still in the top 50. Uh, it's still going to pump first, uh, you know, in terms of a bull market, large large caps tend to pump first. Um, so I'm still I'm still bullish on EOS. I will say it's probably the coin I'm most skeptical about on this point. I did ident identify great fractal for EOS, but it actually didn't end up playing out. Um, so we have to see what happens with EOS, right? I do think it's going to go up regardless. Every coin tends to go up in the bull market to a certain extent. Um, but, you know, it's whether it will outperform the market or not is something we're just going to have to wait and see. Um, with Digibyte... <coughs> got Digibyte, uh, got a little bit of Nano as well, but I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, but Digibyte, the reason I'm holding Digibyte, well, first of all, right, goes back to what I was saying before. When new people get into the market, they look for familiar coins. They also look for coins that rival Bitcoin, right? Because a bunch of new people are going to get into the market and a bunch of new people are going to have differing opinions. Uh, the most, you know, the most large cap, large mark capitalization, well-known, you know, rivals of Bitcoin, direct rivals of Bitcoin, self-proclaimed rivals are Digibyte and Nano, right? Digibyte and Nano. Uh, and that's why I hold both of those coins. Digibyte even has the same tokenomics as Bitcoin, right? It's it's essentially claiming to be a better Bitcoin, more eco-friendly, faster, cheaper. Um, and that's why I'm holding it, right? And I'm also holding it because I see a very bullish fractal. Right, again, I'm hedging my bets against Bitcoin. Obviously, I had Bitcoin, right? I'm hedging my bets against Bitcoin by holding Digibyte, by holding Nano, right? Um, and I see a bullish fractal on this as well. Uh, we can see that in 2017, uh, in this region around May um, to early June, we pumped up massively. We saw a drop down in May and we just bounced around here before seeing a pump uh, in December and January. That's when all coins tend to take off, right? We saw a pump here in around May. We dropped down at the start of June and we're kind of bouncing around and I still think we're going to see a pump in December and January. The market cycle repeats itself endlessly every four years. There's no reason why it won't repeat itself here for Digibyte in my opinion. Right, I, I see no reason. I think my price prediction for Digibyte, I outlined it in a YouTube video, is about 36 cents, 36 USD. Right, I've got no reason. I can't see a reason why Digibyte can't reach 36 USD, uh, 36 cents. Sorry, in the USD, um, that seems pretty reasonable to me. Bullish on uh, on Digibyte. You know, and again, it's got this proven history. It's been around for a long time, 2014. Uh, and you know, people say. Uh, that just because a coin's been around for a long time doesn't mean it's going to stay around. I 100% agree with you, but I also think it's much safer to invest in a coin that's been around for a long time. It's got a track record. Uh, it's been through two bear markets than a coin that's just come out this year, right? Much, much safer. Um, it's got a dedicated community. The thing with coins like Nano and Digibyte as well, the communities are very diehard because they genuinely believe uh, that, you know, all of the people in the market are being kind of um, misled by Bitcoin's promises and they think that this is the better alternative, right? And people who believe things like that, this goes back to Bitcoin Cash as well, people who believe kind of, I guess you could say kind of radical beliefs like that, um, tend to not really stand uh, back down and, you know, every dip, they're going to buy it. Every bear market, they're going to they're stack more. And I think Digibyte and Nano tend to perform quite well because of that. And I'm definitely waiting for that second leg up. We saw the first leg here. We saw this first leg in 2017, go down for a bit, pump up the second leg. We've seen the first leg here, gone down for a bit. We're going to pump up the second leg uh, towards the end of Q4, start of Q1. That's my opinion for Digibyte. Uh, it's also mid cap, right? Um, and again, this is coming back to what I was saying. It's good to have a diversification in terms of uh, what coins you're holding. You have a bunch of low caps, a bunch of mid caps, a bunch of large caps, right? Diversifying. You don't want to put all your eggs in the low cap basket because then if none of those coins take off, uh, they're not going to perform with the rest of the market. Mid caps tend to kind of drift in the middle there. They're a good mix between risk and reward. And large caps are, you know, tend to be more conservative where, you know, they, they offer a decent amount of reward uh, for a very, very low amount of risk. Um, we've got Dent. Dent is something I want to talk about as well. Not going to reach its all-time high, right? I've, I've, I've looked into this in videos before. It's market cap and price are very, very different. It's not going back to its all-time high in my opinion, right? Uh, so we can almost just delete that from the picture and just look at this. But the reason why I like Dent is because historically it has shown that it's a very sharp mover. I'm not holding Dent for the long term. Very important to know. Uh, Dent, I'm, it's currently in my portfolio as a, uh, you know, possibly one month maximum, right? As a trading signal, I've identified this cup and handle formation. We came down in this cup, came for the handle, we're seeing a breakout right now, right? That's what I'm holding it for. Uh, so it's not a long-term trade, but it's just it's just a good example that I do have a couple of coins uh, that I trade in the short term, right? So this is a short-term trade uh, as well as RLC. A short-term trade, I'm holding for a couple of months. We can see without getting into the chart too much, an upwards trend line, we've recently tested that trend line, we should be seeing a bounce right now. So these two coins, 
you know, I, I like to, and this is an example I wanted to give by using these two coins, right? Um, these coins are an example that, uh, you know, at least some of your capital sh capital should be freed up, should be used for making short-term uh, swing trades, right? So I've got my core coins. These are some of them. These are just examples of them, right? My core coins here, EOS, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Icon, WanChain, Digibyte. And then I've got, you know, just a couple of them. Again, this isn't all of them, but I've got a couple like Dent and RLC, which I'm holding for the short term, uh, taking advantage of a short-term swing trading opportunity, uh, which is good as well. And they're both median caps. Both have pretty volatile price action uh, with relatively large returns. Um, and then we have, the moonshots, right? The last portfolio of my, the last category of my portfolio, right? Uh, we've got Ego. Ego. I've spoken about Let's Go Finance a lot. It's basically a, a, an alternative to Patreon, decentralized um, donations platform for the cryptocurrency space. Um, and I like to call it a moonshot, right? And these are coins that are, you know, and you don't even have to have these in your portfolio. Realistically, crypto has very high returns anyway. Uh, but if you really want to have that extra risk, you know, I've got like, you know, 1% of my portfolio. Uh, in ego um, and you know a couple of other micro cap coins as well just you know as, as a little uh, roll of the dice almost but you know it's it's that being said nothing's a gamble right it's all taken into account it's all an investment in some sense i strongly believe uh, that the fundamentals of ego and the fundamentals of let's go finance are very good right i do believe it could be revolutionary it could be game changing to the way donation platforms work especially in the crypto space um, but that said you know, the market cap, this market cap here is incorrect. The market cap is only around 700,000. So, you know, the odds are naturally stacked against the, against the coin. And the good thing about micro caps, though, is that you don't need to actually invest a lot of money in them to make a lot of money in return if they work out, right? So market cap 700,000, if you invest, you know, for example, this is just an example, I'm not saying you should do this, put $1,000 in Ego, um, and, you know, if it 10Xs, the market cap's only 7 million, right? And that's a very, very, very small market cap. Uh, if at 100x's the market cap's only 70 million, that's relatively small. That's only looking at being in a top 500 coin. Uh, so, you know, the, re the reward is massive, uh, but obviously the price action is very volatile. And if you're choosing micro caps, um, I'm not talking about safe moon coins or whatever, safe tokens or doge, baby doge coins. No, 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 no. That's gambling, right? I'm talking about actually looking at coins uh, that, you know, look very un undervalued have a dedicated team, they're safe, they've been audited, they have relatively good fundamentals, um, and you know, taking uh, a little bit of a risk um, with that as well, with a small percentage of your portfolio, because if it plays out, you know, you're smiling. Um, and anyway, that's that's kind of my breakdown of my portfolio, right? So I just wanted to get the main points across that I have a mixture, and I'm not saying you guys should copy this portfolio exactly. This is my whole portfolio. I'm just using some examples here. Um, but essentially, it's good. To, the main points I want to say is it's good to have a mixture between high caps and low caps, between high risk and low risk, right? Always diversifying between those. It's good to have um, a mixture between certain different spaces, right? So we got um, interoperability. We've got, uh, you know, direct transaction spaces. We've got NFT spaces, um, you know, de DEXs, you know, it's good to mix in all areas so you don't miss out on any um, potential, uh, you know, uh, sector of the market pumping. For example, we had the NFT pump earlier this year and currently actually we're seeing the NFT pump. Um, you know, people who have NFT coins are smiling, right? Because they, they, they diversified and they anticipated for this to happen. So it's good to spread your money out in multiple places, for, not just throughout different coins, but throughout different market caps, throughout you know different spaces in the market, sectors in the market. Um, that's what I wanted to get into in this uh, video as well. And I guess the main point as well, um, the second main point would be hedging your bets constantly, right? Um, don't be one of those people who is die hard for one specific coin. Right, that coin doesn't care about you. Okay, that that company they don't care about you. Right, it's like people who uh, only buy Apple products. Right, there's nothing wrong with only buying Apple products, but at the end of the day, you have to realize that you know Apple doesn't care about you. You need to be having an objective view of the uh, market. In this case, you need to be looking at the Samsung phones when they come out and actually comparing it. Uh, you know, there's brand loyalty uh, in the cryptocurrency market. In the financial market, it's not going to get you anywhere. The only thing brand loyalty is going to do is lose your money. Right, so be objective. Don't don't fall in love with one particular coin. It's not how this market works, right? Hedge your bets constantly. Even if you really, really, really like a coin, like if you really like Bitcoin Cash, you should still buy Bitcoin, right? In my opinion. Um, but that's been the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Uh, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.